All right, well, this is uh, a just a, a beautiful example of the kind of cooking that Chef Suzanne Cups is doing at Untitled at the Whitney Museum. By no means a vegetarian restaurant. As a matter of fact, uh, Suzanne has sneaked a little bacon into this dish as well, but it's definitely a restaurant that loves its seasonal produce, and it's uh, you're gonna see a lot of vegetables uh, when you come to Untitled. This is roasted honey nut squash from way upstate New York, not too far from Syracuse, our favorite producer of squash, and some homemade ricotta cheese, uh, some pumpkin seeds, and a little bit of ahi dolce uh, peppers are in there as well to add some sweetness. The bread on the side, um, it's kind of a hard thing to keep that bread fresh when you're cutting it for a thousand people, but that's made by our uh, bakery called Daily Provisions right next door to Union Square Cafe, and you can spread it, dip it, do whatever you want with it. Okay, so the wines, Emerald has chosen on the left, the first wine, the Zind Humbrecht Van de Table de France, Zind 2012, that scored 88 points and cost $35. My wine is Antonoria's Umbria White Cervara della Sala, 2014, 91 points, $50. This is going to be a tough morning because I'm already voting against Tom. Um, uh oh. No, I, I have to say. That's the, what we're talking about, friend. No, That's no, what we're talking about. You're not going to be in the cover never, ever again. Yeah. And what I liked about the dish is that the squash itself, it's a beautiful, simple flavor. It's only squash. That's all it is. There's no dairy, there's no nothing until you start to mix it up. I've got to say, uh, every time I got a bite of bacon and every time I got a bite of the uh, pepper in there, I just kept going back to Zind, the, the wine that Emerald picked. Um, the, the, the mineral notes in the... Um, the Chavaro, I thought we're gonna work really, really well because, you know, that squash came from the ground. That's, yeah. that's all it is. And somehow, it just didn't march down the aisle the way I expected it to. Number one, uh, I'm sorry, but this 88 on the same homebridge, I don't know who scores these wines, but I'm sorry, I'll, leave, I'll give it a 90 at least. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming back next year. So, Tom, your wine, you know, we know you, you are trying to sell magazines and keep bringing these people. <laughs> you chose a crowd pleaser, we know it. So everybody will agree with you. But even Emeralds, too safe of a bet to go for so much Chardonnay. But you know, if I had to choose one, without a doubt, for me, Emerald wine goes so hand on hand with this amazing dish. And it's amazing that we have a squash dish that shows up so well. So my vote, sorry Tom, is for Emil. Jose, I have tears in my eyes right now with that. And let's throw it out to the audience. Raise hey. your hand if you think that Emerald's Zind 2012 took the match. Whoa! Whoa! And raise your hand if you think that Italian Cervara della Sala took the match. Oh, shit. Well, sh even with creative vote counting, Emerald, in fact, I'm voting for Emerald's wine too. Ray Ray! No, it's a better match. Okay, so now we move clockwise to uh, Mario's tuna ravigo. Mario, you want to describe the dish and what your goal was for this? There's sort of two classic ravigo preparations. There's a creamy ravigo, uh, which is sort of Creole aioli um, that's indigenous to, to New Orleans and uh, that area of, of the United States. And then there's a, a ravigo sauce that's from the south of France. That's an oil-based uh, ravigo. This one leans towards, so it's uh, chopped capers, uh, parsley, dried tomato, green onion, olive oil, uh, shingled cucumber on the bottom, and a soft-boiled soft egg over the top. So the egg adds the richness to the tuna. Um, if Jose was making this, it would be a foam of cucumber, but I, I, I'm actually, I actually use the cucumber. Who? Oh, oh. Who? Shots fired, shots fired. Hey, hey for, First one out. for the record, his tattoos are fake. <laughs> <laughs> and Danny chose a Benanti Etna White Superiore Pietra Marina 2013 
We haven't rated the 2013, but the 12 was 91, and it's $50. I chose Peter Michaels, Sauvignon Blanc, Knights Valley, La Midi 2013, 94 points, $52. Your style of Ravigat, you have nailed it. It, it. it could be French, it could be New Orleans, it could be Spanish, it could be a lot of things. The dish is really just spot on awesome. It's Spanish, probably. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> Did I say Spanish? I said Spain, right? Okay. I, I love where Danny went, but you know what? The, the Peter Michael for me, uh, goes and stands with this. Uh, it's a perfect match. Mario, it's your dish. Tell me your thoughts on the wine matches. So I was having a cigar late last night with Marvin. <laughs> and uh, Really? Just he and I discussing. And before I packed up to go home, he sort of leaned in and whispered to me and said, if you ever want to see a grand award, you vote for Tom tomorrow. <laughs> invited back who knows <laughs> we we all did that when we were rookies <laughs> tom i think your wine's exceptional thank you mario <laughs> well let's throw it out to the crowd how about you how how many of you think that danny's wine the etna white went best with the dish that's a lot of hands and how many wine think the peter michael sauvignon blanc Mario, we are two of two, you are. Yeah, all right, so Peter, thank you so much. He's standing there cheering you.